we're going to draw together the 1H NMR spectrum for ethanol. This molecule, which is two carbons, single bonded together with an OH on it. All right, step one is to find the equivalent hydrogens on the molecule. Now these three H's are all connected to the same carbon, so they are equivalent to each other. These two hydrogens are connected to the same carbon, so they're equivalent to each other. And this H over here is on its own in the molecule. It's not equivalent to anything else, but it is on its own. Now if you have symmetry in the molecule, remember, sometimes you'll have equivalent hydrogens in more than one place. In this case, because we have an OH on the end, as you get farther away from the O, the O will have less of a pull on the electrons around the hydrogens, and so only hydrogens connected to the carbon, uh, hydrogens connected to the same carbon are equivalent. Okay, so what we have here is three hydrogens all connected to this end carbon. Now, how many hydrogens are on the carbon adjacent to this one? The answer is two of them because this is the carbon they're attached to. The carbon beside it has two H's on it. So I'm going to say that the peak created by these three hydrogens in the NMR spectrum is split twice. Now what that means is it's split into three separate peaks in a high resolution spectrum. And according to Pascal's triangle, if you're familiar with it, breaks it into a one, two, one pattern. The hydrogens I've circled in purple, there are only two of them. There are two hydrogens. And how many hydrogens are on carbons adjacent to this one? Now, if we find carbon atoms adjacent to this one, that includes this guy, but not this guy. This guy is adjacent, and he has three hydrogens attached to him. This, these hydrogens are going to be split three times. This hydrogen does not contribute to splitting for these guys because the O acts as a buffer. That's why I say only look at carbons that are adjacent to the carbon that your hydrogens are attached to. According to Pascal's triangle, when something is split three times, it goes into a one, three, three, one pattern. We'll keep that in mind when we're drawing the the high resolution spectrum. And this hydrogen, because it is buffered by this O, is not going to be split at all. It is one hydrogen, and there is no peak splitting here. Okay, we're ready. Now, what I like people to keep in mind when they're drawing their spectrums is that generally, the closer hydrogens are to an oxygen, the farther down field they're going to be. Uh, I think I used the word downfield properly there. They're going to be farther away from zero, farther to the left. Uh, don't trust me when I say downfield and upfield, though. Okay, so I'm going to draw these two hydrogens first because they are closest to the O. I'm going to draw him last. We have two hydrogens split three times into a 1, 3, 3, 1 pattern. So I'm just going to arbitrarily draw some peaks here. One, three, three, one, where I make sure that the heights of my peaks correspond to this. I'm trying to make my middle two peaks, obviously the same height as each other, and three times bigger than my end peaks. Getting a little farther away, we have three hydrogens split twice. We're looking for a one, two, one pattern. So I'm just going to draw one, two, one, and if you're wondering why I'm drawing these guys a little bit taller, my ones are taller than the ones from the corresponding one, it's because we have more hydrogens. The three and the two here actually correspond to what's called the integrated area of the curves, or the area under all those peaks combined. This one would integrate to two where this one integrates to three and this is a ratio I don't actually know what the areas under NMR peaks are. Now finally I left this guy till the end just because alcohols are really weird. Uh, alcohols, the H's from alcohols I should say can be anywhere from like one ppm down to or up to ten and you don't really know where they're gonna appear unless A you've done a lot of NMR before or B you have the spectrum in front of you. I would personally be guessing 
that this H would be farther this way, farther to the left of my diagram, maybe five, six, seven ppm. But I happen to know what the spectrum looks like, and I'm, it ends up being right about here. Now I downloaded the spectrum of this molecule from something called SDBS. Uh, apparently I have to, yeah, I'll tell you where it's from. They say you have to reference it when you use it. So there you go. And here's the NMR spectrum. Look at that. We've got 1331 approximately for my peaks here. We've got 121, which corresponds to these guys. And then we have a little tiny nub here, not split at all for the OH. And again, personally, I would have guessed that the OH would be farther over here, but I can't argue with science and it ends up being here instead. Huh, that's the way it goes. Cool. If you understand why I drew my spectrum like this and why I guessed where the peaks were, where they were, you're set. That was number one. Stay tuned for more HNMR spectrums.